Yeah, okay. What's up guys? Welcome to another art video. I know you're thinking, oh my God, this video is so long. It is long, okay? It's longer. And if you don't wanna watch it all in one go or your attention span can't do it, whatever, watch the whole thing, but just like split it up. It's like sometimes I'll watch Netflix and I'll watch half the movie. The next day I'll be like, ooh, I have half a movie left to watch. It's like a little treat, you know? <laughs> and naturally this art piece actually has a lot of steps to it. So I didn't wanna just cut it short and just leave out things. So I packed it all in there. I've also added in tips and tricks of things that I've learned over the years with working with resin and 3D printing that I feel could actually help you if you're into this. If not, it's just very aesthetically pleasing to watch. It's pure ASMR. So that explains the length of the video. And I will say this is my favorite and my best art piece to date. I could honestly confidently say that I'm so obsessed with it, so much so that you guys may see this right here. This is a Daniel Arsham piece. I paid over $3,000 for this art piece and I've replaced it with my own. Not because I'm conceited, it's because I like my own work. And I think as an artist, you should like your own work. The art piece I finished is just on the other side of this wall. Prime, like prime art real estate, you know? I'm my own biggest fan. No shame in that. No shame in that at all. Let me tell you about the meaning of this before we go in. I'm a big believer that we all have something to offer. We all have a gift, we all have a hidden talent. And lately I've been thinking about this, like how many people out there could have been so great and so amazing but they didn't have the right environment, the right support system. There's beautiful and amazing minds all around us every single day. You have one yourself, even though you're like, nah, I'm so average, like whatever, like and you just haven't found it yet. It's, it's a metaphor and I'll explain it at the end of the video. I want you to enjoy it, watch how it was made. If you have any questions, please comment down below or comment on my Instagram picture of this art piece. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it and uh, I'll see you guys at the end of this video to explain it. So first up, we loaded up Sculptura. This is an app that I use on my iPad to smooth out any rough files. Here we have the paint splash for our spray paint can. Before printing this, I wanna make sure this is as smooth as possible and this app is great for that. Once it was looking good, it was time to print. And you guessed it, a failed print. The second attempt was way more successful and here it is. 28 hours later, our splash was done. I took some paper towel and cleaned up the build plate. And then it was time to break the supports. This is always a satisfying part, but it's slightly nerve wracking when you have a fragile piece like this. As I hammer in a scraper, it was the only way to do it. These, I made these supports really thick because the first print was a fail. I didn't want to have to do a second one, but so far so good. Now, since this piece is way too large to fit in our ultrasonic cleaner, I ended up dipping a paper towel in isopropyl alcohol and just sort of rubbed it down to get rid of any uncured resin. Then, as always, I post-cured it under a black light for about two minutes. While that was curing, it was time to swap out the resin in our vat. This is something I've never actually shown you guys before. For the next step of this art piece, I need to use clear resin, which means I need to get rid of any colored resin that's already in our vat. Majority of 3D resin printers will have one corner that is meant for pouring. Now you'll notice there's chunks falling out of this. This is stuff that we want to avoid putting back into the vat when we're ready to use this resin again. And to do that, I use these things that look like coffee filters. At the very end of the spout, there's this really fine mesh. Now that's gonna catch any of the semi-cured resin from going back Back into the bottle. So I get asked this question a lot is what do you do with the extra resin? Do you just leave it there? Oftentimes I like to put it back in the bottle when I'm done using that color. Once all that resin was filtered through, capped off the bottle and then cleaned up the workstation for the next step. Next, I went in with a paper towel and absorbed all of the remaining UV resin that was not able to be poured out. Once that was cleaned up, it was time to go into the plastic scraper and clean up any sort of half-cured resin that is stuck to our film. This is a pretty tedious process, but if we're putting in clear resin after this, we wanna make sure there is no remains of any colored resin in there. Next, I wanna show you the product that we're using today. This is from a company called Monocure 3D. Now they're based in Australia and they sent me a bottle of their crystal clear resin. They actually sent me this small sample bottle of their tough resin as well. This is what I wanted. Honestly, it's one of the most expensive 3D resins I've been able to find, but the reason being is it doesn't really yellow with the post-curing process. And what's amazing is this took two days to get to me from Australia. So I poured some of that into our newly cleaned vat and you could already see how crystal clear, it's like water. It's like syrupy water already. Now, if you're wondering, this is about $145 a bottle. Next, it was time to load up our spray paint can, which I didn't show you the whole process of making this, but I ended up smoothing that as well in the same app. This is always satisfying, and you can see the bubbles rise up too here. Now, I wanna show you something. You can see on the inside of this can, the resin is actually going above its levels. You'll notice on my previous art projects, I tend to put air holes or drainage holes. It's for this exact reason. It's creating a suction, which is actually gonna cause the top of this print to fail. 
Well, that was printing, it was time to make a mold of our spray. Now, I wanted the end to actually go to a more of a finer point, so I went in with some clay and I modeled it to go to a very small point. Next, it was time to build the casing that's gonna hold the silicone inside. Here, I'm using foam core. This stuff you can get at the dollar store for about $2 a board, and I'm using hot glue to make a box around the base of our spray. You wanna go in with glue and make sure every single crack and crevice is filled with glue. Because once we pour the silicone in, its main job is to figure out every nook and cranny that it could fill. And if there's a crack, it's gonna leak through there, no problem. Now the reason why I built my casing like this is, is to save room so I'm not wasting too much space on unused silicone. So not only did I hot glue every single crack on this thing, I also went in with some tape and taped the entire thing as a second layer of leak proof protection. Oh God, that's, that, no, never mind. that sounds like a maxi pad, but next it was time to use silicone. Today we're using a fast curing silicone, which actually sets in about 30 minutes. Similar to resin, it's a one for one mixture. So I'm filling this cup half full of part A of our silicone and I'm actually making two batches and then filling the exact same amount on the other half of the cup with part B, which is this blue stuff. Now, once these mixed together, I've got about nine minutes of working time. And when mixing, you want to make sure it's one solid color so you don't see streaks of white or anything like that. Then it was time to pour. We're not gonna leave this for 30 minutes while this fast curing silicone sets. It looks pretty good. Right there, the tape's holding it in where the glue failed. Tape's holding it in right here. Luckily, we had the tape because it's uh, it's trying to spill out here too. So these are all cracks that I wasn't able to see at the time. Thankfully, we had this second barrier of tape that is now keeping all of it in. We're gonna come back in 30 minutes, take all the foam core off, and we'll have our mold left. See you guys in 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, the silicone was fully cured and it was time to remove it from our casing. And it worked out perfect. Now this does look a little sus, okay? I'll say that. But it worked perfect and it held our mold exactly how we wanted it to. Next, it was time to actually make our splash. For this, I'm using an acrylic box just to support our mold. And today I'm using Art Resin. This is a brand I've used for years now. It's perfect. I've used it on so many art projects. And then of course, I'm adding sprinkles. If you're new to my art, I like to include sprinkles in almost all of my pieces. First up, we're gonna pour half a cup of resin and then the exact same amount of hardener. Mix those together. And over the years, I tried to figure out a way to expedite this process. I'm just gonna tell you now, you're gonna have to stir this for two minutes. There's no way around it. Next up, I poured half a cup of sprinkles and then poured in some resin. Now, I wish I could give you guys a specific amount of resin, but you really just have to figure out the texture that you're looking for. You want it to be sort of a thick oatmeal texture. And ideally it'll pour out like this, not like a liquid, but sort of clumpy and it'll just sort of slowly melt into place. So sprinkles take up a lot of room. So this is actually more sprinkles than it is resin. So I've got an entire half cup full of resin. And so that's where I use these dumping molds. So this is a camera that I'm now gonna dump the extra resin into and project after project, it'll actually create another piece on its own. So, and what I've been doing is I'm taking my heat gun, and just running it over to pop the bubbles. Go ahead and dump the sprinkles into the camera. We've got all this resin, so I'm just gonna dye it a color. Let's go with like neon yellow. Yeah. This is now settled, so we're gonna leave this overnight. I know we're gonna clean all this up, so uh, we're prepared for tomorrow. See you guys in the morning. Rise and shine, baby boy! Okay, it's day two of this pee. Ah, is it day two? Now, this isn't gonna be fully cured, but I find this is the best time to get rid of any sort of fragile pieces. This is because it's still gummy, which means if it's in a tight spot, it's not actually gonna snap off. It may just stretch, but luckily you could sort of remold it because it's still soft. But as you can tell from my reaction, it worked. Okay, back to the spray paint can. 22 hours later, our piece was done. And as you can see, the lid failed because I did not do a drainage hole to let the inside resin escape. I'm not super worried because it's just a small top of the piece that I know I could fix. Yes, 
beautiful. Now, similar to our splash, this piece was too big to fit in our ultrasonic cleaner. So I used a paper towel and soaked it in isopropyl alcohol and just rubbed down the entire piece to get rid of any uncured resin. Turned out beautiful. We got some supports in the center there that I'm actually gonna have to get to. I might reprint a cap and just cut it off and then just glue the new one on. I'm gonna sand the outside as well, just to get rid of the, uh, you can see how it's very choppy. And when I sand it, it should actually become even more glass-like. Pretty much the same size of a spray can. I'm gonna do a new cap. Let's finish processing this. I'm really nervous to do this part because this is where it would yellow. I contacted Monocure, they said, do it for like maximum one minute or put it outside in the shade and not in direct sunlight. Go ahead and try this. One minute starts now. Fingers crossed this does not turn yellow. Out of the curing chamber and it's not that bad. I mean, it yellowed a tiny, tiny bit. For clear resin, this would have been like almost beige for the cheap stuff. Still impressed, we can still work with this. So this is as rough as this can is gonna look at this point. This is sanded with 150 grit sandpaper. So it's only gonna get clearer and smoother from this point on. Can't see through it at all. The caps are almost done printing. There's about 10 minutes left on the caps. Then we're gonna sand this all the way down and glue the new one on. So this is now after 240 grit. You can start to see it see-through. Supports on the inside a little bit better now. So next is 400 grit. So this is as polished as we're gonna get it. This is up to 10,000 grit sandpaper. This is with wet sanding. The reason why it's not glass clear is because you can see how thick the walls are. We polished the outside up to 10,000 grit. This thing is totally smooth. It's the inside wall that now we're seeing that has blemishes. You can see the little bit of layer lines. That's from the inside wall. Because once you guys see what I'm gonna do with this, um, it should be okay. So I printed four the same size, but different supports, just so if one of them failed, they didn't all fail. And clearly it worked out here. So if you guys do 3D printing and you're gonna print multiples, I suggest making a different variant so that if one wipes out, they're not all wasted. Nice, okay, so that's gonna be perfect. Now using my Dremel and 60 grit sandpaper, I shaved down the damaged part of our piece. Now I sped this up just to save some time and actually the sound effect just sounds like a, like a wet ass cartoon fart, just check it out. Maybe you don't find this, I found this hilarious, but maybe you don't, okay, anyway, let's just keep going. Thankfully the inside support just slid right out. Next, I'm gonna do something that's optional that I like to do on most pieces. I take a paintbrush and use some resin and just sort of paint down the entire piece in a very thin coat of resin. This is gonna fill in any blemishes, any surface level air bubbles, and also give us this beautiful gloss gloss finish so it almost looks like glass, or if you're going with a liquid, it'll look like it's still wet. So the last shot you saw was actually filmed on June 9th. Today is June 29th. I actually ordered these before, so it took about two and a half weeks to get these sprinkles. This is all a part of the art piece that I'm making. These are black and white sprinkles. The sprinkles that I use on this piece so far are all colored, but for the metaphor, I needed colorless ones. Surprisingly, they're a lot harder to find. I went on Amazon, nothing. I went to all the baking stores around my area, nothing. To get exclusively black and white sprinkles, I had to go on this website. They're called sprinklesandtoppers.com. Um, they're based in the UK, so it took a few weeks to get here. So the piece has been on hold since um, I last shot this. Today we're gonna be able to finish it, which is exciting. So let's get back to this. I think the last thing I left off was I sanded the lid. Now it's time to add our sprinkles. For this, I'm gonna roll up a piece of paper to create a very small funnel. And then I started pouring. down the edges of our cap so it would fit flush with our can. And it fit great. Next, I wanna show you guys a trick on how to deal with foggy resin. Now I could sand this down and make it clear, but that's gonna take me another two hours. What you could also do is take some resin, spin it on the inside, hit it with the black light to cure, and then paint it a layer on the outside as well. And with this, you're gonna notice it goes glass clear. I also did the same technique on any of the rough parts that I couldn't really get with sanding. So the edges of the can, the corners of the can. Now, since I didn't want this clear resin to yellow, I hit it very quickly with the black light. Now it's time to put the cap on. 
I put down a layer of UV resin, put on our cap, hit it with the black light, and then fuse the outside of the cap to our spray can. A great way to look at this is like liquid welding. I'm just using a brush to make sure all of the cracks are filled with UV resin. Hit it with the black light to cure, and then dried up any sort of extra residue. Now our cap is fully attached in one solid piece to our spray can, and our sprinkles are now forever locked inside. Now I want to show you how I plan on displaying this piece. So I'm going to use these very sticky Velcro tabs. These are rated to hold up to 16 pounds. So I put one on the bottom side of our spray, and then I put on the other side of the Velcro to that sticker. Then I peel off the back adhesive, I line it up with my piece, and I push it against the wall. The reason this is the best way is because this piece is far too thin on its stem to actually support its base. So this has a 90 degree angle, and it would actually snap if this was actually connected at the lid. So all I do is I connect the splash to the wall and I lined up the spray can to the end of the spray. And just like that, I've created honestly, probably my best and most favorite art piece I've ever done. Because I, I can't use the actual mic right now, so I'm just gonna go like this. I just wanna show you guys. So, I mean, you already saw through the whole video. This is the final piece. I'm obsessed with it. Let me explain this really quick. So here we have a spray paint can. This The can obviously represents you and I. It's people. This is you. The inside sprinkles is that magic, the flair, the uniqueness that you and I and everybody else carries. That's your magic. That's your specialty. It can be something like humor or really caring about people because that's hard to find these days. Someone that really cares about somebody. The issue is it's black and white. And in order to make this pop and become magic, sometimes you need the right environment to bring it out of you. Maybe the right technique, maybe the, the right heart hobby, the right job, the right city. So many things could factor into that stuff staying inside. But when you find it, when you realize you're good at it, and when you accept it and you are your own biggest fan, you create magic, which is what this is. It's going from black and white sprinkles to this rainbow explosion of just all this color of what you actually bring to this world. Obviously, I wanted this piece to be an inspiring piece which is why I love it. And I actually am a big believer. I never look at someone and go, you're a waste of a human being. Maybe I'll say that if I'm really angry, <laughs> but I'll never mean it. That's what this piece is. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed the art piece or you enjoyed the video. It'll help me and my channel. I understand a lot of you guys probably aren't getting notified. Just hit the bell and it'll actually re-notify you if you're not getting notified. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see additional videos of this or you have any additional questions, go to my Instagram at Danocracy where I'll have a photo of this. You can call commented there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and I'll see you guys next week in my next art video. See you guys later.